What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a title called Frozen Flame. I know next to nothing about this game. I'm going to be very honest with you up front. This is one of those games that I think they've had a couple of open betas and things of that nature. And I know the game has been worked on for a really, really long time, but I haven't quite been in an open world survival sandbox RPG mood with like base building. Basically, you know the whole like core Valheim loop. I haven't really been in the mood for that lately, and so honestly, I skipped out on all of it. Uh, the developers have fired over a key so that I can do a preview, and I figured what I'll do today is there's going to be some editing, and I feel like with a game like this, you definitely want to play it for a couple of hours first. My guess is that this video may either go a little bit long, or it may contain quite a bit of editing, which may be a little bit jarring for those of you that prefer me to hit this thing completely and totally unadulterated. We'll see how it goes, we'll see how the footage patches together, but if after watching this game you wanted to get it for yourself, there's a link to the early access down below in the description. Right now the game is cruising along at a 60% mixed rating, and so... I'm interested. Honestly, when I see that, it makes me want to jump in. Like, my job is too easy when it's just flatly, like, mostly negative or, like, mostly positive. When it's sitting right at just that kind of 60, 61 percent, that's the magic hour for content creation because it means there's going to be things to applaud and there's going to be things to pick away at. So let's get to the picking. Uh, the link is down below along with my Discord and my Twitch stream. If I feel like we haven't hit this game hard enough and I feel like we haven't gotten a good enough look at it, I'll probably stream it so that we can get a little bit further on in and I can throw myself onto the grenade with a little bit more full of a belly. And so that Twitch link is going to be down there for you as well. This video will more than likely go live on either Saturday or Sunday. I'll more than likely be streaming on Sunday. That is to say like the 20th of November, I guess. So there you go. Let's dive on in and play. Uh, so as of right now, what it looks like is you can play locally and you can have up to six players connect locally. It looks like they have private servers that you can rent, but it does not appear as though there's going to be like public server hosting yet in this current phase of the early access. Now I plan on playing all of these games solo. It's very, very rare at my age that any of my friends with all their kids and soccer games and picking kids up from school and things of that nature, making lunches, dinner, that like I ever get together with anybody to play games anymore. It happens very, very rarely. So I'm going to be mostly appraising the solo aspect of this game during this video. If you're looking for like multiplayer performance and like who's selling the private servers and all that kind of stuff, I can't help you there. There do seem to be a lot of people upset on the reviews and also on the forums about the way the private servers are being handled. So if you are planning on playing with more than six people, I would highly recommend you dig in and do some research as to the way that the private servers are being disseminated out to the community because some people seem to be really, really bumping their knees on that. I don't know too much about it. I just know that there are vocal people talking about it right now. So one to six players playing locally. Okay. Uh, I can help you out with that in this video. 1 to 24 players buying a server? I, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and start a local game. We'll go ahead and start a new one right here so that you go straight from the beginning. And let's get on into this thing. All right. The Asylum of the Faceless. I'm a Skeletor. I'm walking around with my bone hanging out. That's normally in most civilized societies generally frowned upon. All right, we'll grab a metal sword over here off the ground. And it uh, looks like there's some skeletons, and it looks like it wants me to kill them all. Uh, it looks like... Left click? Okay, left click make me swing at a sword. Good, he backpedaled though and dodged all of it. And then right click look like it make me block at a sword. Ow, I've been smote, but I didn't think... Actually, it lets you break animation pretty much anywhere in there in order to uh, knock out a block and so like all right it's not a particularly it's not a particularly visually interesting animation break but the block does seem to count like if you swing your sword even if you're like mid swing and you hold down right click uh, it seems like it gives you credit for the block regardless that's a little bit weird all right uh, there does not appear to be any way to lock on to enemies i would assume that would let me check the keybinds real quick Okay, so I went through the keybinds and there does not appear to be a way to lock on to enemies. However, it does allow you to re-keybind whatever you want to re-keybind right there. Uh, with the controller options though, it doesn't look like there's any rebind ability or anything going on on that side. So fair warning, if you're planning on playing with a controller, uh, it looks to me like there is no keybinding available. 
let's go ahead and dive back on in. Definitely want to get a target lock implemented, I think about as soon as possible. Uh, it helps reduce the level of clunky dunks. Like when people swing a weapon, they want that weapon to like hit, and there's no better way to kind of like make that happen. Ow. Bro, did you just do a jump strike? Anyways, there's no better way to make that happen with a target lock. I'm not a huge target lock user in Dark Souls style systems like action RPG combat, but I do use it for single combat a lot of the time in certain cases. Hello, glowing red-haired lady. I am impressed by the quality of the assets here. It's a very, very pretty looking game. Uh, Mithra the Keeper, head straight for the energy vortex. There's no time to chat. As it tends to go in these sorts of games, yeah, I guess there is no time to chat. Rise again, small pebble, as she gets smacked by the undead. Gotcha. Damn, dude, what do you like on keto? How are you even that cut? Like, how is that even remotely possible? Are you on the gear? Just be honest with me. Do you eat, like, one bran muffin a day and then just mostly eat ejections to the butt cheek? There's no way that you are this jacked with that low of a body fat count without some kind of chemical help, my man. It's okay. You can come clean with me. I'm not going to snitch. I'm not that guy. Uh, looks like we've got some facial details we can play around with here, from freckles to having kind of like a 5 o'clock shadow, I guess. I'll go with the 5 o'clock shadow. Eye color, where's my brown eyes at right there? There we go. We'll get some, like, brown eyes. Looks like we've got a number of hairstyles. It does not look like it splits up by beard and hairstyle, though, which is actually going to limit customizability a little bit right there. It looks like we've just got, like, these 10 hairstyles, basically. I'll probably go after this guy right here. We can be old Grandpa Grumpy. Nah, I'm just kidding. We'll give him like a... There we go. Perfect. We've de-aged ourselves by about 40 years with four clicks of the mouse. Uh, it does look like we can have some tattoos. And I'm pretty heavily tattooed, like neck to hand. So like, yeah, dude, let's, let's, do, the, let's do the tattooing. That seems all right to me. Uh, well, do we want like a woad color or do we want it to be like a, a natural tattoo color? We'll go with, like, a natural tattoo color. That sounds all right to me. Doesn't look like we get to name the character. So I, I'm guessing that when you're playing with other people, it probably just shows your Steam name. All right, so we're in the Temple of Flame. It's a little bluey to be a temple. I mean, there is fire around. Credit where credit's due. Who's this guy over here? What do you got going on? I see you've got more meat on your bones, little one. What, you don't remember anything? What, you got a headache? No big. It happens to all of us. Just keep on going down the path, and I'll meet up with you on the other side. Okay, can I have that sword right there? Can you, like, let me have your giant Rathalos slang stony sword? No? All right, that's cool. There's a tablet over here. What does the tablet do? Apparently, it's just like a lore dump. All right, I, I literally never read anything in a video game. I've never read a Skyrim book. I, I, I skip through pretty much all dialogue, all text, unless I'm, like, really engrossed. But that's pretty rare. I don't know. I find that a lot of RPGs, they fall very, very heavily into tropism. And it's just like, I can kind of predict just from looking at the aesthetic of the game what the storyline is here. Let me guess, there's like a big magical world, some big bad guy came along, I'm the only thing that can stop it, so now I've got to build a 3 by 3 house in order to store my stuff and like whittle some axes or something out of a twig. Am I, am I somewhere in the right wheelhouse here? <laughs> okay, I have been materialized. We're going to walk out of the cave and it's going to do like a rotational vista thing. It's a missed opportunity if you don't, man. You gotta do it with a game like this. What is that tablet right there? Hold on, I'm gonna take my well-muscled self over here, and I'm gonna go look at it. What is this? Uh, it filled in a little UI element, so I'm guessing that the Cradle of the Keeper's Memorial. I'm guessing something good happens if I find all of these. Uh, from what I've researched about the game, it does seem to be kind of targeting that Breath of the Wild, or maybe that Guild Wars 2-style gameplay. Uh, where there's going to be like a big open world map where we can do whatever we want, but there's like dungeons, uh, there's jumping puzzles, you know, there there's general puzzles, things of that nature to kind of break up the monotony of like crafting and building and all that kind of stuff. Good little flyover right there. The game world is colorful, and honestly, the quality of the assets seems to be very, very high. Like something that you might be able to see from like Blizzard or like one of the bigger outfits. So for an indie developer, honestly impressive work with regards to just the way that the game appears. What is that? What are you? I harvest you. Uh, apparently, it is like a curly twirly of like straw or something. It allows me to do oh, branches. There we go. Okay, what else we got around here? It's a crafting survival game, all right? You're just going to have to go to bed with the fact that we're going to be picking up rocks and chopping down trees. 
That's how this always begins. It doesn't matter if you're playing Valheim. Doesn't matter if you're playing Rust. Doesn't matter. We're going to chop down some trees and stuff. What is this? The trunk of the tree is too thick. An axe cannot cut it. Okay, do I have the stuff for an axe? I saw a pop-up. Looks like I need another rock. You got another rock around here for me? You got another little stony jabroni around here that I can get my hands on? I see something twinkling. Ah, it's twigs. Hey, that looks like a rock to me. All right, so we've got a rock. Let's go ahead and do the first thing we always do in games like this. Make ourselves an axe. There it is. Uh, we have an axe. We may be able to defend ourselves. It looks like this axe is perfectly suitable to chop down a tree. It does look like the game has a differentiated animation based on whether you are fighting someone with the axe or whether you're chopping down a tree. That's a good detail. That's definitely something I always recommend to be included. Uh, having those two sets of animations, just a tiny little bit more immersive. We've got a guy with a World of Warcraft exclamation point up above his head over there, so I should probably investigate that momentarily, too. Alright, so we've got some logs, we've got some sticks, we've got some branches. As of right now, I have no clue if this is actively connected to the internet. Like, am I going to get latency and lag? Like, they were kind of like, so hosting privately, I'm guessing since I'm the host, it's running off of my computer. But I guess we'll just have to pay attention and, like, wait and see. I don't know if there's, like, a ping menu or, like, a network menu or anything like that that I could open up to see if it's actually transferring data right now, despite the fact that, like, I'm the host. So that's going to have to remain a little bit un What are you? I smack you. I don't know what you are. You weren't hostile. You never bothered me. I'm just psychotic. Uh, I've killed you. And it looks like a little meter up in the top left-hand corner started to fill on in. Okay. Grief, catastrophe, madness, and hopelessness. I've been robbed and cleaned out of everything. They stole my most precious possessions. Okay, so, like, what do you want me to do? Uh, after reviewing the quest, because I haphazardly clicked all the way through it very, very rapidly, uh, he wants us to go get a backpack from some guys that robbed him. So we're going to go get his backpack back, but not after I do it. i got to do a little bit of grazing first. got, like, some apples right there. Okay, how do I feel about them apples? Well, how I feel is that they are, they are apples. I don't know that I've ever been emotionally invested in the possibility of apples, but, you know, having something to eat rather than nothing to eat, probably a good call. So after having stuffed myself to the brim with apples, uh, oh, I can take something? What can I take? I got a thing. What is it? A magical seed. It dwells in the world. Oh, God, that one. Okay, apparently these guys have, like, a social hierarchy, and they will help each other out if, like, gangster stuff starts happening. Fair enough. Let me murder you as well. That one didn't have any loot on it. It disintegrated instantly. What is this? An energy potion inside of a treasure chest. Okay, cool. And what is this thing right here? Like, what? what, what is this? Do I break it? It looks like it... I wonder if I get a shovel and I, like, dig right here or something. Kind of feels like a maybe in that regard. All right, uh, let's carry on and see if we can find this guy's backpack. Do we have a world map to fiddle around with here? We do indeed have a fully illustrated map. Very nice. Uh, so I'm guessing that that's probably my guy right there. Yeah, so let's go ahead and head on over that way and see what kind of conflict we can get ourselves involved in. Are they oh, yeah, there they are. Okay, little, 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 I don't even know what to call them. What was the name of the, what was the name of the little girl in Harry, or I'm not Harry Potter. What was the name of the little, oh, the arrows affect their own allies too. What was the name of the little girl that ate the blueberry pie thing in Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory and ended up like inflating Veruca Salt, was that her name? We've got these Veruca Salt monsters over here and it looks like there are destructive environments, which is good. Uh, the combat feels like passable to me right now. I do think that there's like some inherent weirdness to it, like blocks counting even though you're mid-swing. Um, and it does feel like there's not like a delay, but a long wind-up on the swings as well. It's difficult to say unless I had access to like a lock-on system. So there's 30 bucks and Hornhead's backpack. Okay, the eponymously named Hornhead. We have satisfied the criteria for his quest. Let's go ahead and head back and see what kind of rewards he'll spit out for us. There's an altar over here that I can pray at. Oh, there's a skill tree. Okay, so I've got one level up. And it looks like I can only take the central tile for right now, so I guess I'll do that. We now have combat energy. Fighting enemies fills up a power bar. You can hold left click to do a power attack. Okay. Uh, let's go test that out. Let's go see how that feels. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just kind of whoop one of these little blue guys right here. 
I'm not seeing like an energy meter anywhere that's filling up. Maybe I didn't lock it in properly. I am, however, being bombarded from every area. Oh, there's the little meter right there. Okay. So I can't do the heavy attack until it's completely and totally full. But yeah, you can see the little blue meter up above my health bar. All right. Uh, let's grab... I Yes, I will take another magical seed. Why not? One can never have enough magic in their lives. Oh, and look at that. I get all glowy and stuff, too. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm getting all, I'm getting all minty fresh vascular. All right. Uh, my backpack. You've got it. I hope the vermin who stole it suffered agonizing pain. Sure, sure. Yeah, I hit him a lot. Uh, you have a spark of talent. No doubt of that. As a reward, I offer you a chance to purchase something from me. So, wait. So, like... My reward is that you're going to let me be your customer? I don't know, man. What do you have? Oh, he's got, like, a bandana right there. Doesn't look like I can sell him anything, but he does have battle axes, and he does have a torch and a bandana. All right. Fair enough. Looks fine to me. Uh, start a campfire is the next thing the game wants me to do, so very well. I will start a campfire. Uh, what's up with a campfire? It uh, looks to me as though we make a campfire from inside of our inventory right here. So let's throw one together. Campfire. Looks good to me. And it looks like we can either destroy it, we can add a log. Okay, yeah, throw, throw another log on the fire. Cook me up some bacon and some beans. Boop, 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 boop. And it appears as though we are cooking two apples together, one by one. Uh, the game does have an experimental, I guess, influenced cookbook uh, where you kind of like put things together and things come out. It looks like two of those right there made us a fruit cake. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, I think I could probably live with that. So two apples makes a fruit cake. Uh, it does give us a bunch of health back, so I think it's a good idea for me to make these, but it's going to take a little while, so let me go ahead and mash these out real quick doesn't look like the game has the ability to queue up similar crafts. So, like, I can't go to the cookbook and just be like, one, two, three, four, five, and then, like, sit here and wait for it to make all five of them. I think we have to craft each and every one individually. It's a little tiny bit clunky. Uh, if you're going to include the cookbook, I thought for sure that the cookbook would just allow me to multi-craft, but it does not appear to be the case. I would recommend they add that on in. That would be a really, really nice quality of life feature. All right, so now that I have put together my veritable fruitcake empire... It looks like I can eat it, and yeah, I get some fat regen right there. I'll probably put that on, like, my four keys so that I can eat it when I want, but it does look like it has a cooldown. Some of my meter went yellow. Is that, like, temporary health? What's up with the yellow health right there? Uh, ow, I'm being bombarded from every direction. Hold on. Yeah, we got issues. The game does have a lead-in attack when you're sprinting, so that little spinny attack right there, he just does that if you're already sprinting when you engage with an enemy. It's kind of nice, but you can't, like, combo out of it. There's sort of, like, a, a slight a bit of clunk, I guess, to the combat that I'm noticing. Uh, where things that should have connective fibers don't feel like they have connective fibers. Uh, complete the ritual in time. Okay. Oh, uh, collect energy from runestones. Gotcha. Well, that would explain what these things are. Are there more of them, like, rattling around? Where are the other ones at? I was going to say, I felt like there was one back here. Uh, it looks like we've got ourselves a bit of a time trial. All right, so we'll hit that right there. And then the final one, I feel like I saw it across the road. I could be wrong. Yeah, there it is right there. I was going to say, my positional reckoning is not always the best, but like I feel like I feel like I done seen it. Uh, the ritual is complete. Apparently, I got to level up from that. Okay, fair enough. It does seem like they've got, like, a little smattering of activities, whether it be, like, classical RPG questing, time trials, uh, things. Oh, another treasure chest, too. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me get that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need that to be added on into my, my collection here. Three health potions out of that chest. Not too bad. Nothing that I hate. I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna maintain, like, a fruitcake-heavy diet for right now. It looks like we're going to have to warm ourselves and have certain clothing, too, because we get a heat buff from being near the fire. Um, but let's go ahead and get this next level up knocked out after we murder this little dude right here, too. I'm kind of curious if I can repair my weapons. I'm not, like, a big fan of weapon durability, but a repair system can kind of make that easier. No! I have to make a shameful post-edit. There is a repair system. I talked right here about how the game needs a repair system, but there is one. It's later when you get a workbench. So now I look like a giant dummy. Weep.
pain deep down in my stomach. Uh, we've got extra health. We've got makes your combat energy go up faster. Extra stamina. Stamina does seem a little bit lightweight, so I'm going to go ahead and get some extra stamina. It looks like we can increase our carrying capacity right there as well. What does that do? Attacks with the bow use less stamina. Attacks with a great sword consume much less stamina. Okay, so we specialize. Basically, there's great sword, there's bow, and it looks like there's staff for right now as far as, like, weaponization options go. I don't know if we need, like, flint or something. I see, like, these little nodes up here. But I don't know if we need something more specific to get, like... Okay, so my axe broke. It broke very, very quickly, in fact. Uh, so it's possible that not using the right tool... Yeah! So if you're not using the right tool, it basically, like, instantly breaks against the side of whatever it is you're trying to make. Uh, that's pretty much all my stones, so I'm going to stop experimenting, and I'm just going to guess that we're going to find a pickaxe. Uh, we're going to find some kind of, like, pickaxe recipe at some point. Let's get on with the exploration. There's a couple of points of interest, and they are employing the exact same thing here that Breath of the Wild did, where they try to keep points of interest up high so that you can see them kind of from wherever you are. Uh, basically... I call them vistas, uh, but they're used to subconsciously guide the player through the world. You see a thing, you think to yourself, that's cool, I wonder how I get up there. And then you wander off in that direction. And so anyways, it looks like they do have that. Like, there's like a little bridge right there. There's a big statue over there. There's like a vortex. Uh, there's like a, some kind of like miller station over there, like a, a windmill. And so I see things around. And I think this is our next tablet, right? Yeah, we got to find five of those before we're done with that. I'm not going to worry too much about collecting apples since I'm full up on fruitcakes for right now. Let's just kind of see what happens while we're out here in the realm. It does look like we have bad guys around here near these towers and near these little huts. I don't know if there's going to be anything I can salvage from this place. But if I could get some free, ma like, building material. Hey, there you go, treasure chest. I do like games that reward exploration. And this seems like a game that wants you to look around. It feels like that to me. Let's go ahead and whack these little Veruca Salt guys over here real quick. I missed my first swing. He fired an arrow at me. Dodge went off reasonably flawlessly. They do seem to react to being hit, and I do like the sound effect that they've selected, but there's no getting around the fact that there is like a, a chunkiness to the combat there. Like, it seems to me like the sounds are well selected, the animations look okay, but something just feels a tiny bit clunky dunky in between the click and the swing and the way that it flows in between attacks, especially transitioning out of, like, that guy right there. Uh, it kind of locks you down for a little bit, and you can feel that in there, and I'm willing to bet other people are going to feel that in there, too. Sir? I'm going to need you to stop backpedaling. I know that I'm hacking and whacking away on you like some kind of Friday the 13th villain at the moment, but, like, I just need you to sit down and accept this. Uh, let's go ahead and engorge ourselves on fruitcake real fast. Fruitcake engorgement done. And it does sound like there's an audio cue when there's actually treasure around. I can hear, like, a little Tinkerbell jingle jangle. Oh, what are you? A rune stone. Is that like an item I collected? Can be exchanged with archaeologists for items. Gotcha. The enemies, I don't know how much money I got out of killing guys. I haven't really been paying attention to if I'm picking up cash or anything like that. But, oh, can I loot this guy? Oh, my bad. Uh, he's got a fabric. Okay, so apparently it's just like World of Warcraft if we want to get fabric, we kill, like, humanoids, basically. I'm gonna grab another stone in case I end up needing... Well, I do like that there was no... there was no collision plane right there. Like, it actually allowed me to... Oh, I think it actually intended for me to maybe do that. Or maybe it didn't. I don't know. Uh, it does look like there's, like, a, a higher up place right there with, like, a plank. I wonder how I get up there. I see butterflies up there too, so I think there's like a treasure or something up there. Let me let me let me rotate around the building real quick. Oh, I think I see it. Okay. I think I see how I get up and in there. I think it wants you to kind of go like this way. Yeah. 
And then like, oh no, dude, was I wrong? Do I not have a vault or like a climb or anything? Okay, I don't think I have a vault or a climb or anything, a la Genshin Impact or whatever. So I don't think I can get up right there. Well, I walked around it a little bit, and there's obviously like an intended way it wants me to get up there, but I can't seem to locate it. And so we'll just leave it alone for right now. I'm sure those among you who are way smarter than I am probably already saw it and were like, yo, dude, like waving your arms and whatnot, being like, hey, man, how are you screwing this up? I don't know, dude. Curse of the YouTuber. I, I don't really know what to tell you. Curse of the YouTuber. Uh, it does look like we have... Oh, I hit the... I The tablet had collision, bro. For realsies. So this tablet seems to imply that some of these jobs aren't going to be able to get done unless I build something. Like a bridge or something like that. We've got like a beam and like a brace. Let's say for like a second. Ooh, it's working. It's working. It's working. Snapping seems okay. It's not the best snapping I've ever seen. Neither is it the worst. However, we did get to the Stella, so that's good. We've got another rune if we ever find out who the hell it is that actually, like, trades these things. Uh, and it gave me the ability to get back across. So there you go. Apparently, creative solutions are expected, which now makes me wonder if I can't just build a big stairwell that goes up to the top of that thing. Like, is there even a jump puzzle there? See, now I'm second-guessing my ability to identify clearly delineated gameplay aspects. What is that thing right there? What is that? What are you? Are you my friend? Can I strike you? Will you retaliate if I do you agree? Oh, he made me bleed. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe time for, for a little bit of the old fruity cakes. Maybe just like a little bit. I've never had fruit cake in my life. Uh, people always make jokes about it around Christmas time in America. And for the life of me, I don't think I've ever seen anyone serve fruit cake ever, which always made like the prevalence of those jokes uh, seem really, really weird to me. I don't know. Uh, what do you have? Ooh, piggy meats. Nice. Get a little bit of the old piggy meats right there. I'll take it. Uh, it looks like we are slightly regenerating right now just because we've got a full stomach. Uh, there's a giant beam of lemon light going up into the sky. We should probably go investigate that. What is this? Catch fish. Uh, I don't even have a fishing rod. You mean just like jump into the water and just grab them? This would have been a really good spot for like a fishing mini game, I think. Alas, no fishing minigame where we can, like, throw out our rod and, like, plop it around. Doesn't seem to be a thing, but, like, I've got fish and I've got pig meat and we completed a ritual. Looks like it gave me a whole bunch of XP, so, like, fair enough. Uh, we've got, what is that, another one of those little blueberry guys? Alright, we got a blueberry guy over here. We gotta handle him. Brother, I keep like hitting tab or something like every single time I do it, it's going to lock onto the enemy and then like it never does. Ow, you punched me in my well chiseled pectoral, sir. Oh, cool. He dropped two monies. Hell yeah. I like money. Money's good. Having a little bit of it is awesome. Having more of it is better. Having too much of it seems to seems to have an effect on people. But as long as you're in, like, those first two categories, you know, it's, it's all right. Oh, the yellow beam is the traitor. Hey, I swam out to check if there was anything in this little culvert over here, and there actually was. Okay. Let's keep on cruising. Uh, as it turns out, the yellow light over there is just the traitor, the guy that I unlocked. And I guess it's just to show you clearly where he's at whenever you want to buy something. I do think maybe it might be not the worst idea to think about possibly playing around with the building system. I just don't know exactly. I haven't found a spot yet that I thought to myself, yeah, that's where I want to live at. I'd like to make a staff and try out the magic. Sure, next level. Oh, I need three to get the major nodes. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Uh, let's continue on down the road. Let me see if I can find a pleasant spot that to me screams out like, hey, build a base right here. Like, this is the spot. What is that, a graveyard? Let's go look at the graveyard. Let's go. It looks like a graveyard or like some kind of retaining wall or something. What is it? 
Oh, it's a teleporter. Nice. So it's a fast travel spot. Okay, good. Does fast traveling cost me anything? There you go. Do your airbender dance. Perfect. Uh, it does not look like travel costs you anything, and these also function as respawn points, from what I can tell. So maybe it would probably be a really smart idea to build a base next to one of these so that I can easily and freely access the greater wide world. Uh, let's have a look and let's see how the base building does. Let me chop down a whole bunch of trees. And then once I've got myself confident that I've got a fistful of materials that we can build a base from, uh, we'll give that system a try and we'll just kind of see how it functions. Oh, I've been assailed while I was chopping down trees. Well, hopefully these guys aren't too tough. I don't want to eat the rest of my fruitcakes. Those have to last me the rest of the winter. Uh, let me get some stamina back. Stamina seems to go down pretty rapidly, and it doesn't regenerate very quickly either. Probably. Oh no, my weapon broke. That's like one of the worst things that could have happened here. The propensity for the AI to back up a lot is kind of obnoxious too. I'm just gonna, yeah, feed him the hands, bro. Give him that cold two-piece. Let him, let him, let him feel what them things do, bro. Pop. Listen, bro. Just let me feed you these knuckles. It's not personal. Okay, it's a little personal. You tried to murder me. Uh, I'm gonna need another axe. There we go. Now we're now we're back on the pristine killing floor. Uh, one archer has killed the other archer with his own friendly fire, so it appears as though the mobs. Uh, if there's something in their way, it looks like they don't recalculate and, like, move to make the shot not affect their own allies. They just keep trying to blast through their own allies. A little tiny bit janky, but, like, it helped me win. So, like, on one on one hand, a little janky on the other, it's probably why I won. Uh, the game does have a weight system. I am ardently against weight systems in any survival crafting game. Don't like it, won't ever like it. Uh, my, my personal opinion is that every game, this is already done perfectly by a game called Gothic 3, and it's called Carry As Much Crap As You Want, Who Cares? That right there, that's the, that's the god system of weight distribution. Uh, it looks like if I can make planks, I can make like a slightly nicer base, but like, do I really want to? Let's just kind of make like a, you know, let's just make like a little shack over here. I am a little bit concerned that those enemies are going to respawn and make a nuisance out of themselves. And I've run out of sticks. I farmed so many sticks. I thought I would have many, many sticks, but alas, my stick supply is gone. There you go. Our final foundation is in play. We have a place to live now, kind of. I mean, we have a paddock upon which to, like, sit ourselves. What does it cost me to make a wall? A makeshift... Oh, that's a little wall right there, dude. That's like a little tiny wall. Okay, and it looks like it doesn't snap in naturally with the facing of the character. Okay, well, the walls snap a little bit more clunkily. Yeah, the walls snap a tiny bit more clunkily than the rest of it does, but like we're 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 getting it put together. It's not crazy put together yet, but I do have some logs and like my carrying capacity is just ugly right now. So we'll go ahead and like make a chest. There we go. So now I can throw rocks in there, I can throw my logs in there. It's log, it's log, it's big, it's round, it's wood. And it does seem to be a fairly generous chest. Stacking up the tens is kind of low. I'd say call it like 20 or 50, but like, eh, whatever. I don't know. I'm like really, really against playing inventory management the game. It's just like never a thing that has ever once worked for me. I'm like, meh, meh. A little detail that is kind of cool is I just throw a bunch of logs out of my inventory and they kind of like pile up naturally. I threw out like five and then I threw out like another one. And they kind of pile up in sort of like an organic way. It's a little detail, but it's not a detail that I expected. Right by our base, there's some kind of like weird temple parapet or something over here too. I don't know what those little rods are right there that are glowing, but like... What is this? There are no dragons left in Arcana, only rabid beasts. I mean, like, there's, there's like different flavors of dragon though too. Huh.
Okay, interesting. I Apparently it's some kind of, like, force wall that I can shimmer my way through. I've got most of my house done so far. Uh, from what I can tell, the foundations and anything that has, like, a, an implied facing seems to lay in pretty easily. The walls, however, don't take the character's, like, facing into account before they be deployed. So you've actually got to rotate them manually before they'll snap in properly. So if I had a wall facing left or right like they are on this wall, and I just wanted to ro rotate around and start placing them over here, I would actually have to scroll the mouse wheel and rotate it to that facing before it's going to snap properly. And even then, the snapping feels a little tiny bit off. Uh, that's just my observations about building this over here. I did, however, I got a workbench made. I guess I unlocked a workbench at some point. And so if I can get some fibers and some branches and some stones and some other things together, it looks to me like I might actually be able to clothe myself, which would be, I think, a pretty rad come up. So let's get on after that. And we can just kind of do that in the normal course of our exploration, too. I don't remember what I got my fibers from, but we need to go get some more fiber, dude. We got to get our character back on a... Very regular diet, otherwise this adventure is just not going to work out. A couple more bad guys over here. We'll go ahead and dodge back. We do have an archer right there. Oh, that guy just shoot me with fire? What are you, like the wizard, bro? Okay, yeah, I hated everything about that. That little dude in the middle, he's got to go. Oh, okay, so we know what death looks like here. Apparently I died. Yeah, let's resurrect real fast, and let's see what the penalty is for dying. Was there any sort of penalty? I don't drop my gear or anything, but it does look like maybe I dropped some XP. That's kind of what it looks like to me is that you drop XP on death. Okay, so it's got a little bit of like a Dark Souls system in there where you got to go back and do like a corpse run or whatever. I, I don't really recognize the fascination that gaming has with corpse runs. I feel like even in like 2004 playing World of Warcraft, I can remember doing corpse runs and being like, this is whack. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go ahead and kill these things right here. Hey, another fabric. Nice, dude. If you guys could keep dropping fabric for me. Uh, is the fire guy over here? He is. There's that little fire. He's the one that hits super hard. Okay, you got to get him. That little guy's got to go, like, right now. That guy is, like, a mandatory snipe. Gotcha. Let's go ahead and take this guy down. Maybe dodge out of the way right there. The iframes do seem to be really, really generous on the dodging. There you go. You fall over. Uh, I'll take your $2 and you, wizardy mans. What do you have? You've got another fabric? Yay, I need fabric. Fabric is a thing that I desire in my overall inventory composition. Good. What was in What was in your magical chest? 30 bucks. I'll take that. Probably go buy a bandana or something. Also, I got blue fish right there. Uh, did I pick up? Oh, yeah, I got to pick up my flame. Yeah, so that's what it is. You drop your XP on death back to your, like, last level from what it looks like. Or maybe some percentage thereof. Alright, so after my sojourns, we return home. It's actually kind of, like, right at the beginning of the dawn. Those guys respawn next to my base all the time, and they see me through my walls, and so I have to go murder them every now and again. Uh, we should have materials, though, to do things. So there's our stone pickaxe right there. If we wanted to make a bigger, beefier, batter sword, there's a bigger, beefier, batter sword. If we want to make a stave, there's a stave. I do kind of want to make some armor. I feel like that's a pretty solid choice. Did someone just attack me, bro? Are you trying to get up in my house right now, cousin? Oh, no, dude. My own attacks damaged my walls. Why? Oh, no. Luckily, I put on all my clothing, so I'm no longer nude trying to fight all these guys. All right. Well, there's another cloth. Uh, but anyways, let's have a look here, and I can make, like, arm bracers. Yeah, let's do that, too. Oh, yeah, I found a helmet, by the way. I killed one of those, like, blueberry guys, and they dropped their little... I thought it was going to be a face mask, but it's actually, like, an all-encompassing head helmet. It makes me, like, weaker to corruption or something. It looks like there's going to be, like, elemental attunements or something like that. But anyways, for right now, looks like we're solid. Uh, let's go ahead and put that on the one key. I want to see what's up with this big sword. Like, does this feel a little bit better than my last sword? Combo feels a little bit better on it. Doesn't feel quite as clunky. I think part of it's just the long wind-up on every swing, too. And, like, I think kind of like a little bit of a lack of response from the enemies when you hit them. That might be why the combat feels a little bit clunky, but I couldn't honestly say... Uh, what's up with the staff? What does the staff do? Aw, oh, sweet, bro. 
Okay. All right. Is that all that it does? Just shoots like a big gnarly fireball. Okay. It does light the enemy on fire, though. All right, fair enough. And that weapon definitely hits quite a bit harder than all the other stuff I've got going on. I'm going to need to harvest some food pretty soon, too, I think. Actually, I think I've got like an entire inventory full of food. I didn't check this building over here, either. Those don't break. But is there anything like in here? Oh, no, this is just the backside of that other building we got that chest out of. Right, gotcha. Uh, we do have a pickaxe, so we can start going after flint and things of that nature. But we've been playing for about an hour. It's probably going to edit down to a lot shorter than that. And so let me give you my condensed thoughts about the game so far. So all in all, I don't actually hate Frozen Flame from the first hour or two that we've played here. This is one of those situations where I think some things are done right, some things could definitely use polish, and some other things are flatly meh. Like, in the first case, I think that the game looks absolutely great. It's a game that drips off your screen. It really wants you to admire it and look at it and go to the vistas and admire the textures and the models. Uh, everything from the models to the lighting, they're done very, very well. And the animations seem all right to boot. It's a game that gives you a lot of space to roam, a lot of space to explore, and it takes more of a theme park approach to sandbox RPGs by adding in things from other games like time trials, jumping puzzles, world interaction, exploration, hidden loot chest, hidden dungeons, quests, and a number of other little collect-a-thon activities that just kind of let you have at it. They just kind of turn you loose. Uh, I've enjoyed looking around and getting acclimated with the world. Uh, it could use a little bit more personality in world building, but if you're an explorer like me, it's clear that this is a game that's highly inspired by like Breath of the Wild, Genshin Impact, Guild Wars 2. Like a lot of those activities here are, are very, very similar to those games, and they all have to do with roaming and making you get out there in the world. The cooking for me especially is a really bright point here. It gives you a robust system to make custom meals that will give you sort of Skyrim level benefits in whatever categories you want. More energy, more HP, faster faster regeneration, hit harder, that kind of stuff. You can just move things around with the cooking system as you desire to do so to basically make it an all-purpose health potion, which is really cool. Uh, the combat is, like, the combat is combat. Like, it's okay. I'd probably give it, like, a 5 out of 10. I really hate reducing things down to numbers, but I don't really know how to else to express it here. It works, but that's about the best you can say about it. Like, it's got a certain sort of clunkiness that I think you will absolutely feel in both melee and with casting. It's like the animations, they don't quite blend together and combo right in combination with player inputs. It's really hard to describe, but, like, from a tactile sense, you will feel it when you're playing the game. Like, a little, there, there are little polish issues with it, too. Like, being able to block mid-swing without breaking the animation. So, like, you're swinging your sword, but you do block the enemy's attack. Stuff like that just lends the game a layer of jank that doesn't deserve to be there, given how good the game actually looks. Uh, the combat feeling just so ever slightly wonky and lacking a lock-on... Uh, for me, was just enough to make the game feel really unsatisfying to me. Uh, I also think that the enemies could react a bit more to being hit since we're clubbing them with giant monster hunter, ridiculous oversized two-handers. Like, take a note from that game and, like, let enemies go flying and, like, grind them into the ground with an overhead hit downwards. Like, that kind of stuff would really lend some impact to the game instead of it just being, like, chunk, 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 and they kind of flinch, like, a little bit. You know what I mean? I think there's room for more quality of life throughout the game as well. Things like queuing up meals to be cooked while you're away adventuring, like away from your base, would be really rad. And just kind of balance that around higher tier cooking tables. They cook faster. Uh, if you don't want to add food queuing, um, I personally found the cooking to be really slow. So, like, I think, once again, Monster Hunter-style minigame or something right there to speed up the cooking process and give it little boost to its output would be great. Just anything to keep the player... Anything to keep the player engaged. Uh, the game seems to lack monster models from what I've seen so far, and I actually think it has to do with there's no neutral creatures in the world. Uh, so I've seen skeletons, I've seen jellyfish, I've seen the blueberry guys, I've seen uh, boars, 
and I think I've seen a monster that randomly spawns out of treasure pots every now and again. And that was pretty much it for the first island outside of bosses. And I thought about it for a little bit, and the game doesn't have like neutral creatures like deer wandering around or like birds flitting in between the trees, like hawks and seagulls that you can shoot with your bow to get feathers and other loot. Owls, there's no squirrels running around on the ground going to like the little apple trees and like looking up. Like, I think that's part of it, is that like, I think there's enough monster models just barely but neutral creatures wandering around the world would actually offset the lack of monster models they have in the game and you wouldn't notice it quite so much uh, it very much feels like MMO spawns right now. These enemies go over here, these enemies go over here and nary the two shall tween mix you know what I mean? And neutral monsters I think break up that map space a little bit better. Things like elk and things, you know, like birds and squirrels and rabbits and stuff like that that don't necessarily harm the player but are there to kind of add some motion and life to the whole thing. Uh, I think their addition would actually hide the fact that there's not that many monster types pretty well. I don't know if there's more monsters on the later islands, but that's a thing that I noticed. Uh, just diversify nature a little bit. I bet you it would break up the dead space on the map and make it feel a little bit more alive. Uh, other technical things, like non-mechanical things that I'd expect to see here. Uh, the ability to customize your host lobby didn't seem to be there. Like the ability to adjust monster health, player damage output, player health, how much recovery you get from food with multipliers, enemy and resource spawn times, uh, boss health. Those kinds of sliders at the beginning of setting up your own personal game have become kind of a standard for things like V Rising, Rust, Conan Exiles, all those types of games. And honestly, the omission was kind of surprising to me. I expected to be able to do that. Uh, if you do that sort of thing, it's no longer on the developer to balance the single player experience or the four man experience. Uh, people can just come up with guides on the Steam forums that say, hey, if you've got a group this size and you still want challenge, put the values here, 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 you know? And then you just do it real fast. That's literally what I did with V Rising, and it made my single player really fun. Um, not being able to rebind buttons on a controller, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely implement that for accessibility reasons. So I, I think with Frozen Flame, where I'm at right now is that I am impressed by the visuals, I'm impressed by the exploration, and like the sheer volume of little activities you can do on the map, but not so much the combat and the quality of life. For me, Frozen Flame, uh, after this impressions video, is solidly in the wait and see category. I'll probably check it out sometime around release, or maybe like a year on into their early access roadmap. Uh, which they do have one for what they want to work on, uh, just to kind of see where the game's at and if they've fixed some of my concerns. But for now, I think with the availability of modding and whatnot, there are better feeling sandboxes out there to play in. Unless this game's graphical stylings really, really grip you, or the idea of like a slightly janky single player Genshin Impact or you know, Breath of the Wild uh, sounds attractive to you. But for me, I'm going to wait and see. I don't think that, like, if there was a demo of this game, I probably wouldn't squeeze the trigger right now. That's just me personally. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out Frozen Flame. Tomorrow we'll be checking out something else. Thank you for hanging out with me, and I'll be back later with some more indie game goodness. Bye, folks.